So if you take a look at NASDAQ here, we got it pulled up. We have a 67.4% chance out of a little over 2.8 years of data to tell us that NASDAQ loves, loves, loves to retrace this midnight open from 8 o'clock to uh, 11, 15. Now I know it says 7 to 10, 15. It's the close of the 7 o'clock candle and the close of 10, 15. So it's 8 to 11. So that's why. And then that's why it says 23 here instead of 0 because it's at the close of the 23. So if you add all that in together and combine with objective sell pressure, meaning the bearish liquidity footprints, that's what we're looking at right now. We have not taken a single trade yet. This is just here for reference in case I do get into a trade. Um, so we have broke above this liquidity footprint. So if we are looking for shorts, I'm waiting for us to come back in here and reject this because we've already broken above it. Or if we get a hard rejection over here on the second footprint here, this I'll take the short there. Or if we come all the way up here, I'll take the short. Anywhere that happens in between my time frame, I take the trade. If you enjoy this stream, please, if you get value from it, hit that like button. We've been growing week over week on these live streams, and I really love doing this. Psychology, discipline, and consistency. And why do I say that? I don't say that to sound arrogant. I don't say that to sound like I'm on a high horse or to be different. I say it because it's true based on my experience and based on the multiple, multiple traders that are in my community that have been growing and building daily um, is this right here is the sauce. This is what drives your edge. Okay, people will argue with me all the time and say, Austin, the edge is more important than psychology. What are you doing, dude? You can't make money with psychology. Okay, what drives your edge? What makes you press that button to understand the edge and what you're looking at on the charts? Your mind, your psychology. If you can have a profitable strategy, you can still be unprofitable. Why? Because you don't let the trades play out, because you FOMO, because you take other trades. Maybe you do hit a full take profit and you still give the profits back to the market because you can't get out of the market, because you don't have discipline, because you don't let the trade play out, you don't have psychology, because you took a loss yesterday, so now you're not going to be on the charts today when, you're, when your edge actually is due for some profit and it takes profit, but it, it took profit without you because you didn't take, because you didn't show up every single day. Red, green, or flat. Psychology will always be at the forefront. Hey, we just hit 50 members. Let's go. 51. Congratulations. Nice. Because the edge is like a hammer, right? Okay, look at it like this. An edge is the vehicle. It's the car. It's the truck. It's whatever vehicle you like to drive because trading can be very personal. Your psychology is you in the driver's seat. That vehicle has everything it needs to take you from point A to point B. But if you suck at driving, you get into a fender bender. If you're scared to even get into the vehicle to drive it because you're scared of, of taking a loss, aka you're scared of getting into an accident when it hasn't even happened yet, or if you're overconfident and you're speeding down the highway 100 miles an hour when the speed limit's 60, you're going to get slapped in the face, right? It is the same exact thing. Psychology is always going to be at the forefront of any edge that you will ever do in these markets. An edge is useless without solid psychology. So that is my fundamentals. If you're new here, that is what I talk about. That is why I get what I go over. That is what I reiterate every single session. And most importantly, I never force a trade ever. Then I let I, I, I take the math and I literally blow it out of the water. I will not allow them the system that I've back tested, built data on, this data that I go on the hourly chart here and you can see for yourself, this retrace possibility, I will not be able to get the fruits of this if I continue to let myself take trades that aren't there or close trades early that I shouldn't take in the first place or that I should have taken but then I closed it early due to fear or whatever. We got 71 viewers. Are we going to hit 100 viewers on live today? Guys, thank you all so much for popping in here, man. Get this. Another scenario of where people lose money. Here's another reason why people uh, fail at trading. We were in drawdown, and now we got three, six ticks in profit. We're slightly in profit. People will go into drawdown, and they'll be like, okay, all right, I'm in profit, close. I'm green, close. Why? Why? Let the winners win. Let the trade win. <laughs> Let it win for you. Let the winners win for you. Let the losers lose for you small. This is why I will always tell people, psychology, discipline, consistency, this is what matters in trading, ladies and gentlemen. I know it doesn't sound sexy. I know it doesn't sound as attractive as a 100%, 90% win rate strategy using blah, 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 blah. I know it doesn't sound that sexy, but guys, everything in business is sex is unsexy that makes money. Everything that is unsexy, that's boring, that 
does that 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 goes against what the majority thinks that is what makes money why because the 10% are the people that are profitable the 1% are the people that are making above average income that are that their net worths are larger why are they doing that what what are they doing because they're doing what the majority are not doing they're doing the boring and unsexy while the majority have tiktok like freaking uh, attention spans and they can't you know what i mean focus on one task for more than 30 seconds <laughs> you know what i mean all right 30 seconds and we got some fun we're going to have some fun in the markets let's see we got a pre market pump here do we get a market open that takes us out? Let's see. <laughs> hey, that's happened a couple times. That's happened a few times. I'll be in profit and then market opens and boom, and then go right to profit. <laughs> but hey, that's the model. That's the model. Sometimes it happens. You got to be okay with it. There's the, there's the pump. This coffee is good. Oh, we're popping now. Hey, appreciate that. Thank you, guys. Ooh. Bro, market just pumped like crazy. Oh, my God. Dude. I told you guys, sometimes that happens right there. Sometimes we'll be, I'll be in profit, and then just the market opens. Absolute insanity. And then we go right to theoretical profit. So taking another trade if it happens. Again, I told you guys, I am not upset in the slightest. Not upset in the slightest. It is my stop loss. I just wait for the next trade. So the next trade is if we react off this bearish liquidity footprint right here. Then I'll take the next trade. Yeah, that was a crazy, crazy pump right there. There you go. You good now? You good? You rocking and rolling? All right, we do have uh, U.S. existing home sales coming up in forty or in fifteen minutes, so I'm gonna see where we're at in the trade um, in forty-five minutes, and then go from there. It's the only time I do anything as far as cutting trades if we're around red red folder. If we're around red folder, and I'm like stupid close to profit or something, I'll just close because again, I do not mess with news. I don't trade news. I don't take trades anywhere around news. Hey man, I need to learn how to hold trade long. It's in your model, dude. So, again, if if you don't have confidence in your model to hold the trade, because one of my one of my Discord members, uh, they said this one time. If Mr. H, if you're still watching, shout out to Mr. H. Uh, he's one of my, my pack trade group members, and he said something that is very very good. And he said we always let trades run to our stop loss, but we it's very hard to let the trade run to our take profit. Think about that. Think about that. That's a light bulb moment, isn't it? We always let the trade go to stop loss because we're like, oh, we get hopeful, right? Trades will get super close to our stop loss. I'm like, okay, maybe now it's going to reverse. Maybe now it's going to reverse. And then it hits our stop loss. But what happens when we get to a take profit? Oh, God, I got... Maybe maybe I need to close here. Oh, I'm in profit. Maybe I need to close. I'm scared. But again, that's, a, that's an emotion. So if you are not letting your trades run, you don't have confidence in your strategy. I don't care. I, I'm sorry if this hurts your feelings, but I'm telling you what you need to hear, not what you want to hear, okay? I'm, I don't sugarcoat anything. I don't do that to be aggressive, aggressive. I don't do that to be confrontational. I do that because this is what you need to hear. If you do not let your trades run to your profit targets or play out based on your model, whatever the case may be, you need to stop trading. You need to go back to the drawing board. You need to do the unsexy stuff. I'm telling you, dude. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, you need to do the unsexy stuff. But Austin, I'm going to miss out on profits for the week if I stop trading. If you're here to be a long-term trader, a week is nothing. If you're here to be a long-term trader, a day of trading is, a day of no trading is nothing. A week of no trading is nothing. A month of no trading is nothing. If it takes you, if it asks, if you understand that it's going to probably take a month for you specifically to lay out the foundation of your trading plan and to build confidence in your trading plan, paper trading, back testing, forward testing, watching the setups happen live without you taking them, then so be it. Because what's a little bit of time right now to build a solid foundation for the rest of your life, right? We're not sitting here to get six pack abs in six weeks. We're sitting here to make lifestyle changes. And that's what we're doing here on these markets, guys. Again, you can't treat this like a hobby. You cannot treat this trading game like a hobby. You can't treat this like I'm only here to win all the time and I'm only here to make Lambos. Guys, that's not how trading works. This is a business just like anything else. The only reason so many of us are here is because the barrier to entry is so low. You don't have to be an accredited investor. You don't have to be a high net worth individual. You don't have to have millions of dollars. Anybody can come and open up a brokerage account and start today, right? So when you have this low barrier to entry, you're going to have a high failure rate. You're going to have people flowing in by the dozens, by the masses to try to capture profits because they see everyone on social media getting a thousand bucks in five seconds and they think they can do that too. When what they fail to realize is half the people that are making thousand dollars in five seconds are either paper trading or they're faking the trades altogether. And then the other half, you just don't, you haven't seen the years of hard work that they took to get there. 
you just see these flashy numbers and think that that's what reality is. Okay, so again, if you are having trouble holding these trades, if you're having trouble letting the trades go into profit, go back up against you, go back to your interest. You need to have confidence. I have full peace right now. I am just as relaxed as I was when I took this trade as I am right now watching profit come all the way down here to come back to potentially my entry. I don't care because this is the risk that I made peace with. I made peace with my risk when I took the trade. You guys watch me. And if you just tuned in, go back in time and watch me. I, I said, okay, I'm going to risk this much money in this trade. It was like 90 bucks, I think, in this trade. I'm happy with that. I'm going to risk 90 bucks to make how much ever this is, <laughs> whatever the profit target is. That's it. What else is there for me to do, right? So great question, Amon. And again, I'm not trying to like be confrontational. I'm just telling you what you really need to hear, man. I'm, I'm being I'm being serious. I don't fluff anything up. I'm not sitting here saying, you know, yeah, just stick with it. No, work at it. Start today. Don't work on it, right? Don't don't work on it. Start today. Take action today. Because tomorrow you're going to wish that you started today. Next week you're going to wish you started today. Next month you're going to wish you started today. Next year you're going to wish you started earlier. So why not do it? You're living in it right now. You got five minutes till uh, till news. I was, I was thinking about closing if we get to 200 ticks in profit. That was where I was kind of like, okay, taking profit before news, um, which is about right here because we lost 63 ticks on this trade. So I'm still green for the day. Um, but because like I told you guys, when I'm deep in profit like this and we get close to news, that is when I'm happy making a logical decision to cut the trade. So let's see if I can get the 200 ticks here. If we get close and we start kind of making this reverse price action, I'll close the trade because I want to still end green for the day. But I'm just going to wait. If we hit 200 ticks, I'll be happy taking profit here. At this support right there. Three minutes. Being patient, not being greedy. I'm gonna see what happens here. See, this is the beauty of, of risk management too, right? I lost 63 ticks on the first trade. Now I'm floating at a 167. So literally I can let this trade go all the way back to 63 ticks and I'm still break even for the day. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's the beauty of risk management. It's the beauty of letting these trades play out. So we get a 200 ticks here. That's when I'm closing the trade. I got my hand over the exit all button, flatten all button for my, for my Apex account. <laughs> Because I don't know if when I hit profit here, it's going to close them all out at the same time. I think it's two minutes. Two minutes. Oh, 200 ticks. Huh, I didn't see that. <laughs> all right, closing all here. All right, 200 ticks, baby. Not greedy. Boom, right there. All right, beautiful trade there. 200, what was that? 200 and, yeah, 200 even right there, 200 ticks. Yeah, you, uh, you, we got US home sales literally in 30 seconds. So, yeah, or 50 seconds. That's why I'm closing here. So 200 ticks, people will not make peace with the fact that they made money today and they'll say, dude, like if this if price just dumps, they'll be like, oh my God, oh my God, I should have held. No, you as a trader extracted value from the markets. Never be upset at extracting value from the markets as long as it was a logical decision, right? As long as you made money, logically getting out of the trade, not out of emotion. You made money. You're good. You all, my mentor told me this years ago when I first started. He said, you always as a trader have to be okay watching price go 2% in your favor after closing the trade. And that is so freaking true.